What's up guys, this is TCOS96, back with chapter 13 of my FE7 Chaos Mode 0% Growths LTC playthrough. This chapter is called The Easy Part LOL, which, unfortunately, is not going to be an accurate description of this clear. Right away, I'm going to do a quick stat check on the boss and one of his friends. As you may know, enemy stats can vary a bit in this game, and the boss needs less than his maximum 19 defense, and the cavalier needs less than his maximum 8 speed for this strategy to work. This chapter is the first seize map of the game, meaning we have to defeat the boss and get Hector on the throne. Since we have a flyer with Loen, we can drop Hector and a boss killer over the river, but between the swarm of enemies near the throne and the absolute unit of a boss, there's no way to do this both quickly and reliably. Since this is so early in the run, we don't have much access to the tools we would need to increase reliability, like good weapons or stat boosters, so we'll have to employ some good old-fashioned RNG abuse. Since we don't have battle preparations yet, this first turn is going to consist mostly of some weird trade chains and rescue chains. The main objective is to get the Armor Slayer on Sarah, and then have Loen move as far as he can to the southwest with Sarah and his saddlebags. He can also switch Eliwood to his more accurate fire tone for enemy phase. After Rebecca kills the nearest brigand, she is rescue dropped to the mountain. Since this chapter is so tight, we'll be making good use of the mountains to avoid taking damage that we would have no time to heal. I gotta say, our army is feeling a lot like a physics department so far, with its 80-20 gender split, but our two female units are actually going to be putting in a lot of work this chapter. On the first enemy phase, it'll be Rebecca who one-rounds the archers and easily dodges their hits thanks to the Mountain of Void bonus. She doesn't always double the Steel Bow Archer, since he isn't weighed down, but if not, Barcher will be free to finish him off on player phase. To the north, Eliwood faces a single Cavalier on his way to the Merlinus Village, and he gets doubled due to the humongous weight of basic anima tomes. Thankfully, the Cavalier just has a very weak Javelin, so Eliwood tanks two hits. On turn two, there's just some cleanup and positioning, so I want to take a second to explain an extra modification I made to the ROM. You've probably noticed the little windows below the map animations that show the combat stats. This is a quality of life hack made by FE Universe user Tequila, which is great for giving more information about each round of combat. However, applying on top of the Chaos Mode patch seemed to have caused a bug where it ranges greater than 2, for example with the Steel Sword, at 3 to 10 range, sometimes the incorrect damage value will be displayed. As far as I can tell, hit, crit, and attack speed are no problem, so I decided to leave the feature on despite the issue. If you ever see any weird inconsistencies with damage values, you're not crazy, it's a bug. Anyway, on this turn, Sarah is dropped over the river on the mountain to clear out several enemies. This is the first really unreliable part of the strategy. She has to dodge both a Cavalier and a Pegasus Knight at around 50 hit, and land both counterattacks at around 60 hit. She also faces an Archer, but that's a much easier fight for her. Marcus will handle the RNG manipulation here. The chance of success is around 9%, so low, but not unattainable. The reason Sarah had to be used for this strategy, despite having worse stats than Oswin, is because Oswin has no good weapons for taking out these enemies. His only options so far are the Iron Sword, Steel Sword, and Armor Slayer, none of which have one range. Meanwhile, Sarah has her personal weapon, the Manicotti, and the 1-2 range comes in very handy here, as well as the effective damage on Cavaliers. Sarah doesn't quite have enough power to finish the Pegasus Knight, so Oswin has to land a sketchy Steel Sword hit to clear the path. To the south, we need to lure this huge group of enemies out of formation so Matthew can get through to recruit Geet. Bartra is left without weapons on the fort, and Matthew takes a forest. This seems scary, but with big boosts to avoid, both of them face low hit rates from most of the enemies. Plus, they can both afford to get hit once. Meanwhile, Dorcas passes Hector to Loen, who drops him by the throne. The boss has a full loadout of dangerous silver weapons, including the ridiculous 1-3 range silver sword, so we absolutely cannot let him survive to enemy phase. After a big RN burn from Loen, Sarah will just barely one-round him with a double armor slayer critical. The chance of success is a modest 7%, so again, not too bad as far as 0% gross LTC strategies go. On enemy phase, Hector disrespects his Cavalier with a counter crit. If he hadn't crit and the Cavalier had had maximum speed, Hector would have gotten doubled and taken enough damage to be finished off by the Pegasus Knight, who instead suicides into Sarah. With Matthew and Bartra, there's a ton of variability in terms of who the enemies target, depending on which hits land or miss, and the exact strength rolls, but generally I found that there would be a clear path for a Matthew, or maybe only one enemy in his way, which Oswin or Rebecca can clear out on the next turn.
On this last turn, I'll move some units around just to show that they could help clear enemies out of the way if there was a need. Matthew recruits Gi, who is now an Armor Knight. Clockinator attempted to balance Armor Knights by giving them access to all four physical weapon types, as well as an ESP boost. So Gi is perfectly usable in a normal playthrough. You know, if you're not doing some dumb LTC strategy and you have growth rates and stuff. In this playthrough, he can do some meaty chip in the early game, but he doesn't have many long-term prospects. He will get an attack in here just to give Marcus someone to heal. We also have two villages to get. Aliwood gets the torch to unlock chapter 13x, and Rebecca got the mine. The mine will be a critical item much later. Feel free to place your bets in the comments where I'll be using that. Last thing, Lowen visits the armory to finally sell that red gem and buy a single hand axe. I don't really need the hand axe right now, but I want to support small businesses in these trying times. And that's chapter 13, completed in four turns. Easy part, lol, uh, more like hard uh, part, lol. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Come back next time for chapter 13x, the first FE7 Defend map. Yay.